Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Gloria Day. A special welcome to those of us who are joining us online. Uh, I'm Pastor Eric Tritton, and uh, we are glad to be able to have this opportunity to worship for Palm Sunday uh, as we celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, a couple of notes as we get started. Uh, first of all, uh, I've had some people ask about the box over here. Um, you may or may not know the Gloria Day is doing an expansion, and uh, we are blessed to, uh, to be building. Uh, and uh, that is actually a, um, a box that's separating where there will be an opening into the new building uh, for a new sacristy. Uh, so uh, it's not our normal um, liturgical decor, but uh, you know, it, it is what it is at the moment, and uh, we are thankful to, uh, to be uh, doing the work that we are here. Um, there are morning and evening devotions for the week that are posted online uh, by the, uh, the church, and there will be a link in the, uh, the notes for the program uh, that you could follow to, to get those if you so desire. Also, there are links on the YouTube page uh, for offerings. Um, this is particularly for our members. Um, we, we don't necessarily expect our guests to, uh, uh, to give an offering, uh, but uh, as members of the congregation, we want to be able to continue to support the work and the ministry of the church, and um, we're trying to figure out how to do all of that, and uh, we also have the, uh, the link for Simply Giving on the church's webpage, uh, gloriadayhudson.org, and uh, um, you can take a look at that. Um, let me take a quick moment and introduce the people that we have here with us uh, on violin. We have Joanna Goldslager, and uh, on piano, uh, we have Sharon Alberson, uh, who will be leading our, our music, and we are very thankful. Uh, Bob Branch, our director of Christian education, uh, will be doing the children's message today. And uh, over here, these people who are not properly uh, socially distant, um, they're a family. They're my family, and uh, I'm very thankful for them to uh, have them here helping out. Uh, my wife, uh, Chris, uh, and then my children, Rick, Kate, Libby, Josh, and Lucy. So the order of service is printed for us, and there is a link for that uh, in the, uh, the notes, and uh, we would encourage you to follow along and sing along uh, there at home uh, as we join to sing our opening hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We cannot come closer to God as we are. 
It is only through the gracious forgiveness Christ won for us that we are considered righteous under God's law. Let us confess our sins, pleading, Lord, have mercy and save us, O Lord. We'll take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and on our sinful condition. Father in heaven, David thanked you for answering him and becoming his salvation. Your son humbled himself and became a human being to die in our place. But we confess that in our disobedience we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. Lord, have mercy. He was obedient to death and took our sins with him to the cross. You have exalted him that every knee should bow. We, we confess, confess that, that without your help, we are, are bound to continue in sin as your rebellious children. Hosanna, save us, O Lord. For Jesus' sake, our gracious God has given us his son's own righteousness. The stone the builders rejected has become our salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I announce the grace of God to all of you. All who trust in Jesus are forgiven their sins by the forgiveness he won through his death and resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. reading is from Zechariah chapter 9 verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jer Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, 
which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. In being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Katie. Our gospel lesson for Palm Sunday comes from Matthew chapter 21. The gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophets, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please join me as we confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, and and in in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. For our children's message today, I want to talk to you about my little funnel here and uh, a few things I want to put in the funnel. Um, Some of these uh, things I'm going to put in the funnel can remind us of uh, different kinds of people in the world, and uh, obviously this doesn't work too well, does not go in the funnel, does it? Uh, Reminds me of all the basketball players that make millions of dollars and um, doesn't go in the funnel. How about football? Football going to fit in there? Nope. How about a baseball? Baseball season is delayed, but nope. It fits in there a little bit better, but uh, nope. How about the marble? Almost, almost. All we need is a pencil to get it through. Anybody got a pencil? (laughs) Almost goes through. Look at that. Thank you. There it goes. Now, one last thing we've got to get in there. My, uh, any of you get popcorn at Costco like this? This is how we buy popcorn in our house. Uh, popcorn obviously goes through very nicely. Um, I think all these things that went through here can remind us of uh, people. Um, and they all uh, tried to get through, but they couldn't. Uh, but the easiest one to go through was that... Uh, grain of popcorn. 
that kernel of popcorn. And that kernel of popcorn is a little bit like Jesus. He went there pretty easily. And uh, what he did was a humble thing. That's what we read about that in the Old Testament reading. We read about that in the New Testament reading, that he humbled himself. Didn't make millions of dollars like uh, maybe basketball players do. My basketball, or football players, or even baseball. Jesus didn't make anything. Just gave up his life for us. Through his death on the cross that we will focus on this week. The interesting thing about a kernel of... uh, Popcorn is it can be planted and it can grow. And that's what Jesus did. He grew. He grew his ministry. He grew his church to what we have today. And uh, I want to talk to you real quickly about the way Jesus lived his life. We read about in our two readings. He was humble. And being humble was difficult. It cost him his life. And in the pandemic going around in the world today, we see wonderful acts of humility, taking groceries to a neighbor, praying for someone, doing something simple, something humble for one another. May we praise Jesus for his humility, thank him for his humility, and may we be people that are humble as well. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus as a humble servant Help us to serve others in humble ways. Amen. We join with our next hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
don't know about you, but I, I feel like I'm grieving a little. Today is Palm Sunday. It's, it's the kickoff to Holy Week. And it's usually this, this very festive moment during the Lenten season, this little bit of a break before we get into uh, to Holy Week and we, we dig into the sorrows of Maundy Thursday and, and Good Friday. But we don't even have any palms here. Um, we, we get our, our flowers for the services from the greenhouse here in Hudson and they called us. They canceled the order because they had to close their doors. And uh, so we don't have any palms. And normally, the, the little children uh, come in waving their branches as we sing. And I always have to give like this public service announcement about, you know, it's not a sword. Don't poke people, you know, and, and that type of stuff. Um, but there are no palms and there are no little children. And by the way, kids... Um, I miss you, and uh, I know that Bob misses you too. Today is Palm Sunday, and uh, while I'm glad for the technology and, and the ability to gather online, you know, and, and by the way, if you, if you haven't said hello or posted a picture of your family gathered uh, for worship, uh, please make sure that you do that. That's I always say, you know, please sign in on the yellow sheets. Well, you don't have any yellow sheets. This is how you sign in to let us know that you were here. We'd appreciate that. Um, it's just not the same. I've been thinking a, a lot about this week that we're entering into, this, this week that we call uh, Holy Week, and, you know, wondering how is it that we're going to, to walk through those events of the last week of Jesus' life together as the church, as God's people. And, and how, will we, how will we celebrate Easter? Uh, you know, they're talking about the peak of this uh, coronavirus not happening until the middle of May. What does that mean? And, um, you know, these are, these are hard and, and difficult questions. And the one thing that's really clear to me is that this year will be Different. It will be different than any, any other time that any of us have ever experienced in our lives. And as I think about that, I think about the Babylonian exile of the Israelites. You know, in, in the history of Israel, um, and if this is a little bit obscure, I, 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 I apologize, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to get you there. Um, Remember that in the history of Israel, Israel begins as, as a family. You've got Abraham, and then his son Isaac, and then Isaac's son Jacob, um, who has 12 sons. Um, but Jacob wrestled with God, and his name was changed to Israel. And so from this one man, we end up with a large family, and then those families break up into tribes, and, and those tribes become a, a people, and, and, and they become a, a nation, and they become very powerful. They have kings and queens and, and, and all kinds of, you know, pomp and circumstance and power and wars and, and all those things that, that, that nations do. And, and as they became more powerful, their hearts turned to worship other gods, and uh, God sent prophets and disasters to call his people to repentance. And he called them to turn back to him. And ever since then, times like these, God's people have responded to times of crisis and tragedy with repentance and, and turning back to God. And so one of the things that, that God's people have done centuries upon centuries when we come into difficult times like this, is we examine our hearts for idols. We examine our hearts for false gods. And ultimately, a god is anything that, that you put your hope and trust in. 
They can be statues uh, that people you know, bow down to and, and, and they pray to them. Um, but more often, uh, a God is, is something that God actually created for our good, created for our benefit, and we kind of get our relationship with them wrong. That we put the benefit in the thing rather than in the God who has given it to us. So, your job, your insurance, your stock portfolio, all of these can be idols. Your family can be an idol. The government, medicine, the media can all be idols. They can all be gods. Uh, you know, I, I think I've become more devoted to two o'clock with Governor DeWine than I have been to spending time reading God's word than, you know, across a long period of time. These are things that grab our attention. And then where do we place our hope? Where do we put our trust? Where do we put our confidence uh, for the future? And notice, these, these are good gifts that, that God gives us. But when the relationship gets wrong, God calls us to repent. And that's what was going on with Israel. As they're sent away into exile, because they didn't repent. And they continued uh, in their idolatry. Now, I want to be really clear. Some of the people uh, you know, were very faithful. They, you know, they were trying to live according to, to God's you know, ways and, and, and his, his word. They were trusting God's promise. And they, they, were, they were swept up with the nation. Because eventually God sent his people into exile. He sent them to, to Babylon, which would be modern-day Iraq. And when they were in Babylon, the Babylonians came and they, they took Israel away and they tore down their temple. The temple of Jerusalem was torn down. Now, we're used to the idea that there are all kinds of churches. Um, we have a church like on every corner here in, in Hudson. But that's not what it was like for Israel. They had one church. They had the temple. That's where the offerings were offered. That's where the sacrifices were given. So this was a big deal. This had a huge impact on the, the way that they worshipped. They couldn't offer the sacrifices to atone for their sins. They, they couldn't bring their thank offerings to God's house. They were separated from this, this experience of worship, kind of the way that we're separated from our experience of worship. But they had God's word, just as we have God's word. And they had prayer. And they gathered around God's word and prayer in places called synagogues. This is where the whole synagogue system began, was when they were in captivity in Babylon. In fact, the word synagogue literally means to gather together. And what they were doing is they were gathering around God's word, and they would gather around and pray. And one of the prayers that they prayed was, Lord, please save us. Or in the Hebrew, they would have said, Hosanna. Hosanna. And he did. God heard their prayer. And he gave them their homes again. And he restored their fields and, and their workplace. He, he gave them rulers who rebuilt the temple so that they could offer their sacrifices and they could come into God's house again. And that word Hosanna became a word of praise. Not just a prayer, please save us, but kind of the sense of God has saved us. He sent them into exile because they were worshiping false gods. They literally bowed down and offered sacrifices to idols and they repented and God in his mercy saved them. 
At Jesus' time, the idolatry of God's people was different. They weren't bowing down to idols. They, they, they loved power. They loved identity. They loved status. And, and frankly, they were more like us in terms of what kind of idolatry they were going through. But Jesus came, and remember that his first message, the first sermon Jesus ever preaches is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so we repent. Turn from your sins, because God's grace and love and forgiveness have come to you. And as Jesus preached that message, it, it, it threatened the idols of the powerful. And, and, and in the last week of his life, he entered into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. He came to the holy city like a king who had come in peace. And as he came, people shouted, Hosanna. And I suspect that it was with a, a, a note of praise. But boy, oh boy, when you think about what this week is all about, that word is so appropriate. As Jesus enters into Jerusalem, Hosanna, please save us. And that's our cry today. Oh God, save us. Save us from, from illness. Save us from death. And we pray, use doctors, nurses, researchers, pharmacists, and the, the government to help us because these are, these are God's tools. These are God's gifts to bring life and healing to us. Save us. Hosanna. But God's salvation is it's deeper than restoring health. It's, it's more than, than just kind of restoring people's wealth. He saves us from the deadly pestilence that he, he calls sin. And sin is, at its heart, a form of idolatry. An idolatry that, that teaches you to put yourself over God. It's an idolatry that teaches you to trust yourself instead of trusting your maker, to seek your will, your kingdom, your name. This, this week, it's, it's, it's all about God's response to our idolatry. Jesus entered into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, and that's why he had come to save us. He took our idolatry upon himself. And he shows us the futility of it all. Because he took it and he nailed it to the cross in his own body. Hosanna. He took the just reward for our sin. But then... Then he rose victorious from the dead, showing that he is the one who overcomes sin and death. He's the one that we should trust in. He's the one who can overcome death and the grave for us. And so we cry out, Hosanna, please save us. And we remember that the rumors of grace and, and of forgiveness and of the redemption of all things, they're true because Jesus is risen from the dead and that means that everything is going to be okay. So on this Palm Sunday, when things are not right, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal that whenever all of this stuff comes to an end, whenever God restores us to be able to come back to this house, it's Easter. We'll do the hymns, we'll do, we'll do the Easter breakfast, and we will celebrate that Christ is risen from the dead, that he has indeed heard our hosannas and answered them. Far better 
than we ever expected. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Hosanna, save us. We pray that you would save us from disease and illness. And we thank and praise you that, Hosanna, you have saved us in Jesus from sin and death. So no matter what happens with this time of, of sickness, this time of death, that we are safe in your love and care and that Jesus has won the victory for us. But we also ask not just for ourselves, but that you would save those who are on the front lines that you are using to save us, that you would watch over the government officials who are making very difficult decisions and especially that you would be with, with the nurses and the doctors and the pharmacists and the, 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 the many medical professionals, the respiratory specialists, and that you would save them and help them to be healthy and that you would protect their families. And we lift these requests before you in Jesus' name, amen. Having set out with Jesus our Lord on his journey to Jerusalem, let us bring our prayers to God in humility and love. for the renewal of the church in the coming holy days, for those preparing for baptism, that they may come to the waters of baptism with joy, for all missionaries of the church, 
for pastors, teachers, and for all the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For leaders throughout the world, that they seek the well-being of the poor, practice good stewardship of creation, and work for peace and freedom for all. For refugees and those who provide hospitality, safety, and sustenance to victims of wars, for those who serve in harm's way, and for our enemies, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, and dying, that they find hope in their despair, patience in their suffering, and healing according to God's will. For those who mourn, that they find comfort in the death and resurrection of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For newcomers to our congregation, that they find a warm welcome among God's people. For the families of this congregation, that we care for one another with the mind of Christ. For the safety of all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this Christian assembly, that our eating and drinking in remembrance of Jesus fill us with faith, gratitude, and love for our brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed, we give thanks. For us who still walk by faith, that we remain faithful until that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Hear our prayer, Lord God. Transform our hearts and minds during this holy week to be more like the heart and mind of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let your eyes be fixed on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh Lord, through these 40 days you prayed and kept the fast. Inspire, Inspire repentance for our sin and, and free us from our past. We join to sing, right on, right on in majesty.
A couple of things uh, before everybody uh, signs off here. I want to remind you to please call people to um, just be an encouragement to one another and then also help, help one another as God gives you the opportunity. And then pray and keep praying. Hosanna.